Whether or not it turns out to be Android Popsicle or Pi, today's first unveiling of Android P was certainly a very interesting look at what Google has been doing with AI, and it had a bit of a controversial edge to some major redesigns too. For years, we've had a vertical carousel of apps that appears when multitasking. While some OEMs have opted for different designs, many like myself preferred the vertical carousel for many reasons. It's an excellent use of screen real estate, allows you to quickly move between apps, and differentiates between apps with easy-to-see titles, icons, and colors. When the first leaks of Android P's new multitasking screen appeared, quite a few folks, including myself again, were rather perturbed at the obvious iOS 7-esque horizontal scrolling carousel. What we got was not exactly the expected result, for better and worse, but much of it revolves around some new AI-focused language Google is continuing to inject into Android's back end. By default, you'll find the now standard software navigation buttons of back, home, and overview represented by a triangle, circle, and square. These behave mostly the same, but the long press on the overview square to launch split screen appears to be gone completely. Instead, you'll find a horizontally scrolling row of recently used apps with full-length previews of the whole app instead of just a slice. While having full-size thumbnails is certainly a positive change, only having one or two thumbnails on the screen at once is definitely a negative design change without a doubt. While I could easily pull up the carousel on previous versions of Android, flick down and click my app within a fraction of a second, the time it takes to move between apps on this new horizontal carousel feels unbelievably sluggish to say the least. The other part of the issue here is the pausing before actually entering the app, a very Samsung-esque design that slows things down unnecessarily. The idea is likely to keep you from accidentally pressing the wrong app, but it's just not great for us that want speed. Swiping up on a thumbnail would dismiss the app and remove it from memory as the current sideways swipe gesture behaves. Double tapping overview still moves between the two most recently used apps, but split screen is now quite a few button presses away instead of just a single long press. I'm not even sure I need to go into how bad of a decision this is to remove this. Hopefully Google puts it back before the final build of P, because there are some incredibly irritating steps to have to reproduce, and really are quite a few steps back in intuitive design. Even long pressing each thumbnail and dragging to the top or bottom half of the screen would have been fine to keep, but that too is gone. On the bright side, they've now integrated the app drawer at the system level, meaning you can open overview and swipe up at any time to launch any app. This new design is simply fantastic and highlights one of the absolute best changes in Android P without a doubt. No more archaic going home and finding your icon, just swipe up and launch the app you want from anywhere. The only thing missing here is folder support, but at least this grid is alphabetized. Google also has a new row of smart icons at the bottom, five apps that the system intelligently assesses based on your most frequently used apps. It's basically what we've currently got in the Pixel Launcher at the top row of the app drawer, but in a way more convenient place. Couple this new swipe up app drawer anywhere with the new gesture-based navigation and you'll quickly find Google is in the beginnings of something truly special. Navigating to system settings and enabling the swipe up on home gesture morphs the home button into a pill shape, removing the overview square and back triangle buttons while on the home screen. Long pressing still brings up Google Assistant, but that's about where the similarities end. Swiping up brings up the overview window now, a rather natural feeling gesture that's a clear extension of what Google has been working on with its launcher for a few years now, and another swipe up brings up all the apps, again, no matter what you're doing or what app you're currently in. Once in this screen, you can actually swipe right on the home pill to scroll through the recent app carousel, or better yet, just not even bother with this interface at all, and swipe right on the pill while in any app. A quick flick to the right will switch between the last two running apps, just like how double tapping the overview square behaves, and dragging it to the right and holding it will cycle through apps, letting go to launch the app that's in the center of the screen. Why in the world the back button appears at all is quite a mystery though. While its functionality is obviously needed, a flick to the left on the home pill should just perform the same function, as flicking the pill to the left does absolutely nothing right now. What we get in this iteration is not only a bottom nav bar that still takes up unnecessary screen space, but one that's also asymmetrical, a design foo bar that's sure to annoy some people without a doubt. It's also interesting to see that Google has built these gestures straight into its launcher, and now swipe up doesn't bring up the app drawer at all, rather it just launches overview, keeping the behavior uniform throughout the system. It almost seems like Google's way of trying to remove the home screen launcher entirely, as Swipe Up now functions exactly like a home screen, sans of course support for widgets, which it has been seemingly phasing out through the years as it is. It's definitely a mix of good and bad, and while you can thankfully choose between gesture and button-based navigation, you're going to be stuck with this new horizontal carousel and its limited functionality. Outside of this, the biggest aesthetic change is the new quick toggle design, which look a little weird in the context of the new material theme that's found in Android P. 
while Material Design 2.0 seems to be defined largely by big white spaces and contrast between objects, this new quick toggle design seems to use an older design language that just feels out of place. And quite honestly to me, it looks like an older version of TouchWiz or something similar. The new buttons also feel unnecessarily large and take up almost the entire screen by default with lots of wasted space all over the place. Even with the display size set to the smallest possible setting, these buttons are quite large and look just weird. They also seem to have moved the settings button again, requiring a double swipe down to get to that cogwheel. Here's hoping this is just unfinished design and not a final product. What else will we find in Android P throughout that beta stage? While it likely won't be this big of a change, it's pretty clear Google is making some big changes with Android this year and working to make even bigger ones in the near future. I'm definitely not sold on this new design, but I may come around to it in time. We'll just have to see. We hope you enjoyed that preview and will subscribe to us for regularly updated content. Chat with us on your favorite social media network and don't forget to check out AndroidHeadlines.com for 24-7 tech news coverage. Thanks for watching and until next time.